You guys know, every time I have a new bike day, I like walk in the frame with the box, but this time I needed some L because this thing is so heavy. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Charles and welcome back to my cycling YouTube channel. So in today's video, I finally got a proper indoor cycling bike. So this one is from Stage. It's the SB20. I've been intrigued by this dedicated indoor bikes for over the last months. I've tested the Y1 before when I went to Togary training and I love it so much that I've reached out to my friend at Stages and I asked them, hey guys, can I just test your bike? And they were more than happy to send a review unit for me to unbox, to test and to ride over the next few weeks and the next few months. And then just share with you guys if I prefer the SB20, if I prefer my own road bike on the trainer, like 99% of us do, and just kind of see the advantage and the disadvantage of going with a dedicated indoor cycling bike. So this though will not be a step-by-step -step guide on how to mount the stage SB20 bike from the ground up. It will be mostly me doing a time lapse, trying to figure out how to mount this. If you guys put your hands on the SB20, Stages has a bunch of YouTube videos and blog articles that show step-by-step -step ways to build it. And then after building this bike, I will jump on it for a first test ride. And that's pretty much this deal. So without further ado, let's get a knife and start to unbox this beautiful thing. This is the box, so literally everything is in there. Uh, all you need is pedals. I'm gonna go ahead and just take everything out because there's no way I can lift the whole bike by myself. Look at that! Woohoo! Man, that is huge! That's nice. Little flare here, boom. Yeah, super stoked. Let's, uh, is there more parts? Yeah. All right, so this is pretty cool. Since it's a fully integrated indoor bike, it comes, it's a 40 mil handlebar bar wide. And I've heard there's like a little hack using the brakes in Zwift. So when you want to sprint, at first look, the handlebar bar looks pretty nice. And I love, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's literally buttons on the inside here. So this is to shift, simulate the shifting on the inside with this thumb. Here at the bottom, more buttons. There's two buttons here at the bottom and three at the top. And that's pretty cool because I do think that I will be able to put one of these buttons as my power up. So every time I come to a sprint where you need that exact timing for that aero boost or that feather, well, it's gonna be right there at the top. Such a big advantage. All right, now all the Frick, did I get this out of the basket? I have no idea. <laughs> this thing is so heavy. Maybe if I like lay down with the cart. Man, do I need a friend? God damn. Let's put down the ground. Up. There we go. This is the front leg. Front leg has wheels, so it's a bit easier to transport. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Ah. Oh. There's a little cable here. And there's another little cable on the other side. And I think they need to go with each other. And this little plastic pin here seems to go into the hole right there. There we go, boom. Sweet. Ah. 
All right, so now this start to looks like a finished bike. So we got the cables in, we have the cockpit ready. Pretty cool. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so, so far we're about like 20 minutes in. It's a bit easier than I expected. We almost have a fully finished bike. Let's just do the last little touch up and just jump on it and do our first ride. All right, so this is pretty cool about the stage bike is basically with the crank this big and this wide, you have all the different length that you can put your pedals. So for myself, I am a 170 mil type of guy, but my girlfriend, Gabrielle, she's a 165. So she would put our pedals right here. So the problem is I, I can't, can't really tie the pedals from the other side. Can I do it from up there? In a little bit of angle. That's not optimal, but I think usually they say use like a wrench, like a wrench at the base here, but these Asioma pedals don't have that. So I'm gonna do my best here. Power goes, power brick, I mean, it goes right there. Oh, it's pretty easy then. All right, the build is almost done, but next step is I need to go onto the mobile app so I can select the size of my crank and probably the shifting control that I want for the bike. All right, next step, kind of need to measure from my other bike to this bike and try to get at least a little ballpark fit. My friend, here we have a Pretty much finished bike. All right, let's fire up Zwift and see if the bike is recognized right away. Uh, FE, I think that's the stage bike. Yeah, let's go with stage bike. All right, so it's time to jump on the bike for the first time. Let's do a great training now. Alright guys, first ride, first race, done. What's my first impression here? Number one, so damn smooth. I was not expecting the drivetrain to be this smooth. A chain and a cassette and a crank has a lot of points of contact, a lot of place where it makes noise and it adds vibration to the crank and to the pedal. But this, I, I'm not too sure what system they use, but it's so smooth. Second light thing I like about it so far, the button, they're great. They were placed and they do give this video game feeling. It's like a, if you have like a remote in your hand, a PlayStation remote. So you have your buttons, pretty sure you can customize them, but by default, the right side, you have two buttons to go up and down. It's like it simulates a rear cassette. And on the left, it simulates a front crank. So either a big ring, small ring, Technically, there's no like gear change. It just adds resistance, but it simulates a Shimano drivetrain and it's good enough. It's very good, it's smooth, and I, I kind of feel like I have gears, that little beep. So that's audio input to let you know that you change gears. So if you have music and the app is connected, 
you're gonna hear on top of your music the little poop. I'm pretty sure you can disable that if it annoys you, but I thought it was great. Something else I liked about this bike, I got my fit right, right away. I feel super good, I feel super comfortable. All right now, what else do I like about this bike? This might sound a bit stupid, but the two bottle cages that are right here, they're in your sight of vision, therefore it reminds you to drink. And they're just so easy to go grab. You don't have to go under, under your frame like you do on, a, on your road bike behind you. So this bottle is super accessible, it's right here. You can, you can drink it, you can go on top of your bar, grab your water, put it back down. You have two bottle holders, which is awesome. A fifth point that I loved about this first ride is, you guys know I have a solid sprint. On my regular trainer, I need to add a bunch of weights. And even though I had weights, the trainer still moves. I still end up always 45 degrees. Uh, if you guys saw my visit at Toguri Training, I did sprint on the Wahoo Kicker bike and I moved that bike. But this one, it did not move uh, centimeters if not a millimeters. The only thing that happened, I guess is the first downside, is um, the phone holder here. Well, uh, my phone fell to the ground. So there's two reasons maybe for that is, first, I have a pop socket, so it doesn't stick as much as it could. Little improvement here, it could be nice to have a, maybe just a little phone holder here. So I might like figure out a way to have a little clamp on the side of the phone there, so it stays in place. I love the placement of the phone though, it was great. I could see my Swift Companion app very nicely. Something else I loved about it is, uh, as you saw, I did try that little brake act. So I did pull the brake all the way to the, to the end when sprinting. Uh, so this probably prevent me of shifting up. So as I sprint, I can really like put more and more and more and more pressure all the way to the end where it gets super hard to sprint. And if I need to release, get a little bit more momentum, you release right away and you're back spinning. Another thing I like is the little wiggle room here that the handlebar gives you. At first I thought it was just loose, so I tied up, but I then realized that it's on purpose just to give you a little bit more flexibility, maybe release some tension in the lower back. But yeah, that felt great, that felt smooth, I liked it. Now maybe another downside I've realized is since this bike is so stiff, it's so rigid, there is literally no uh, movement by the saddle so if there's no left to right movement so it can maybe add a little bit more tension and pressure to the lower back on those bit longer rides it's a plus and a minus at the same time a plus that's it's good it's stiff it's great for sprinting but at the same time it's so beefy and so strong that there's no like little flexibility down there so what if you put this on a rocker plate no idea if you can do it I'll, I'll check if people have done it. Could be very nice to have a little bit more side-to-side -side movement. But so far, I am very pleased. Saddle felt very good, very comfortable. I do feel it's a bit in the same style as a Pro Stealth saddle. Short length and not too wide of a nose. It's great, I feel, uh, it reminds me of my other bike. Maybe a bit more cushy, so adds a little bit more comfort over time. Oh, and one more thing. This bike is so silent. There's literally a few dB coming out of the flywheel at the front. Makes a lot less noise than, some, than a drivetrain. A lot less noise than your fan, probably. That is a plus, so if you are in an environment that you don't want to annoy your partner or your siblings, that's pretty cool to have a, a near silent bike. All right, so now what's next for this bike, this Stages SB20? Well, this will become my daily driver for in terms of indoor training. In the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna put at least 1,000 kilometers on this bike. And then I'm gonna do another video to give you guys my honest feedback, my in-depth long-term review of the Stages bike. I got to mention here, this bike has been sent for free for me to review on this YouTube channel, but Stages has absolutely no control over what I'm saying. So they will see this though and the full length review at the same time as you guys on my YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna learn more about this bike or put your hands on it, there will be a link in the description down below with a little discount. As I always mention, this link is affiliate, so I do receive a kickback from that sale. So it funds this YouTube channel for me to become a full-time cyclist. So thank you. All right, so if you enjoyed this deal, please don't forget, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And my name is Charles and I will see you guys on the road or into the next video. Peace.